Hi guys, uh, this is the second uh, part of our touring of the cell and uh, I want you to uh, recall a uh, few important or most important points. I want you to recall that the A chromosome is a double helix molecule and uh, the DNA, uh, sorry, the DNA is a double helix molecule and the A chromosomes uh, consist of very long uh, molecules of DNA. Uh, and this long molecule consisting of many millions of base pairs. Those are the base pairs, thymine, adenine, uh, adenine, guanine, cytosine, remember those, the base uh, found in only in DNA. And thymine in DNA and uracil in RNA, remember that. And uh, those, uh, these are the parts that codes for different things. In human, a gene will be an average uh, on average around 10 to 50,000 base pairs long. Uh, though the longest is two and uh, a half million base pairs. And when a gene is expressed, a specific protein is produced. So how does this work? The first step is called transcription. Occurs within the nucleus, takes place within the nucleus, though uh, uh, this is the process by which the enzymes with one of the strand of DNA molecule within the gene as a template to produce messenger RNA. They produce messenger RNA. Uh, so, and uh, remember that uh, the RNA is single molecule uh, and the DNA is double helix and this one is single strand. And RNA will contain uracil uh, instead of uh, thiamine. And RNA is single strand, and the sugar is ribose rather than deoxyribose in DNA. Okay. So we have produced mRNA. This carries with uh, with it the information encoded in the gene. And uh, after a few code modifications uh, during RNA uh, processing, it will leave the nucleus, uh, passing those. A core complex found in the nuclear uh, envelope uh, where all genetic material or chromatin is and move into the cytoplasm where it will find a ribosome. Uh, this is where translation occur. Um, during translation, the mRNA act as a code for a specific protein. During translation, uh, ribosomal uh, subunits, we have two subunits, of ribosomes, they will assemble together like a sandwich on, on the strand of mRNA, where they proceed uh, to uh, attract tRNA, tra uh, transport RNA molecule, uh, tethered to uh, amino acids. A long chain of amino acids emerges as the ribosome uh, decodes the mRNA sequence into a polypeptide or a new protein. Uh, now we will talk about uh, the second uh, categories of uh, organelles, the functional organelles. We will talk about the endomembrane system. Many of the different membrane bonded organelles of the eukaryotic cells are a part of the endomembrane system, which includes a nuclear envelope, uh, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apartheid, lysosomes, uh, vacuoles, uh, plasma membrane. Uh, this system carries out a variety of tasks in the cell, including synthesis of proteins, transport proteins uh, into membranes and organelles or out of the cell, uh, metabolism and uh, movement of lipids, and detoxification of poisons. The membrane of this system are related either through direct physical continuity or by transfer of membrane segments as tiny vesicles. Uh, those are sac made of membrane. Those are the vesicles. We will focus on the endoplasmic reticulum and uh, the other endomembranes to which the endoplasmic reticulum gives rise. The endoplasmic reticulum consists of a network of membranous tubules and sacs 
called sister nine. We call those sister nine. This is the new uh, the new nucleus, and uh, we have uh, endoplasmic reticulum. It's uh, continued with the nuclear envelope. Uh, this is one of the uh, physical uh, continuity between membranes system between the uh, nuclear envelope. This is a membrane system with other system of membrane, those are the endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, within the endoplasmic reticulum internal uh, compartment called lumen, those the space between uh, two membrane, uh, or cisternal space cavity, or we call them cavity, which is continued with the nuclear envelope. There are two distinct uh, uh, though continue, uh, connected with each other, we have two uh, distinct regions of endoplasmic reticulum that differ in structure and function. We have a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, is so named because its outer uh, surface lacks ribosomes. And rough endoplasmic reticulum, this is an image from uh, transmission electron microscopy, it shows. Uh, endoplasmic reticulum, two different regions of endoplasmic reticulum. Here we have rough endoplasmic, uh, is studded with ribosomes on the outer surface of the membrane, and thus appears rough through uh, the electron microscope. A ribosome is also attached to the cytoplasmic side of the nuclear envelope. Remember that we have a ribosome attached to the outer side or cytoplasmic side of the nuclear envelope outer membrane which is continuous with the uh, endoplasmic reticulum uh, always in like that. Uh, we can summarize the main function of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Um, they synthesize lipids, metabolizes carbohydrates, detoxify drugs and poisons uh, and store calcium ion. Um, many cells secrete proteins that are produced by ribosomes attached to a rough endoplasmic reticulum. Example, pancreatic cells synthesize insulin, and insulin is a type of hormone in uh, endoplasmic reticulum and secrete this hormone into the bloodstream. The polypeptide chain, the polypeptide chain uh, that synthesized by uh, ribosomes, enter the endoplasmic reticulum lumen through a pore formed by protein complex in the uh, endoplasmic reticulum membrane. The newly po uh, polypeptide folds uh, into its functional shape in the lumen. Uh, most secretory proteins are glycoprotein, uh, proteins with uh, uh, carbohydrates. Secretory protein depart from uh, the endoplasmic reticulum wrapped in uh, membranes of uh, membranes of vesicles uh, that but like bubble bubbles uh, vesicles in transient from one part of the cell to another are called transport vesicles. So this is a transport vesicles uh, carry uh, the newly formed polypeptide by the ribosomes and uh, they're modified inside the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum, then transfer or uh, depart the endoplasmic reticulum within a newly formed vesicle or transport vesicle. And uh, in addition to making secretory proteins, a rough endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane factory for the cell too. Uh, after leaving the endoplasmic reticulum, remember that the transport vesicle, after leaving the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, many transport uh, vesicles travel to the Golgi apparatus. Now we are we were talking about the uh, Golgi apparatus. Uh, travel to Golgi apparatus as proteins uh, are modified uh, and sorted and then uh, sent to other destination. So uh, Golgi apparatus uh, act as uh, or serve as uh, modification 
or uh, modification plays for protein that are produced by the ribosomes, those enter the uh, endoplasmic reticulum, and then those transport vesicle, uh, vesicles lead uh, or buds from the endoplasmic reticulum and then move toward the Golgi apparatus for more modification and then sort it. Uh, and then packaging to uh, uh, package them to transport to another place inside the cells. Golgi apparatus uh, consists of a, a group of uh, associated flattened membranous sac sacs. Those are uh, called uh, cisternae. We call them cisternae. The two sides of Golgi uh, sacs are referred to as uh, those two sides are referred to as cis and trans face. These act respectively as the receiving and shipping department of the Golgi apparatus. Cis always near to endoplasmic reticulum. A vesicle uh, that butts from endoplasmic reticulum can add to the membrane uh, of the Golgi apparatus and uh, the content of its lumen to cis phase by fusing. So those physicals will uh, fuse with the uh, Golgi apparatus on the cis phase. The trans phase uh, gives rise to physicals that bunch off and travel to other sites. In addition to its fun, uh, finishing work, the Golgi apparatus also manufactures some macromolecules or uh, many uh, polysaccharides, many of them are polysaccharides, secreted by cells are Golgi products. Uh, and now we will talk about lysosomes. Those are digestive compartments. And the uh, lysosome is a membranous uh, sac of hydrolytic enzyme that can digest macromolecules. Uh, lysosomal uh, enzymes within uh, lysosome work best in acidic environment uh, inside the lysosome. Um, if a lysosome breaks open or leaks its content, the release enzymes are not very active because the cytosol uh, or the cytoplasm uh, of, uh, of the cell has a near neutral pH. However, um, excessive leakage from large number of lysosomes can destroy a cell by cell digestion. Some lysosomes arise by budding from trans phase uh, of the Golgi apparatus. So some of those lysosomes uh, produce from uh, trans phase of Golgi apparatus. Uh, lysosomes carry out um, intracellular digestion in a variety of circumstances. Amoebas and uh, other, many other unicellular uh, cells or protists eat by engulfing smaller organisms or food particles, a process called uh, phagocytosis. Ph uh, phagian mean uh, to eat and uh, cytosis mean uh, cells. The food vacuoles formed in this way by phagocytosis, this food uh, vacuole, uh, then fuses with lysosomes, those are the lysosomes, contain digestive enzymes, uh, to, di to digest this food or engulfed food. A digestion product including uh, simple sugars, amino acids, and uh, other monomers pass into uh, the site of soul. Uh, and become nutrients for the cell. They fuse them to the cytosol. And uh, some human cells uh, also carry out phagocytosis, among them uh, macrophages in uh, white blood cells. Uh, those are the macrophages, those are a type of white BC, uh, uh, white blood cells that helps def uh, defend the body by engulfing and destroying bacteria and other invaders. Lysosomes, uh, also use their hydrolytic enzymes to recycle the cells on uh, organic materials. Uh, those process called autophagy. So it's carried out uh, phagocytosis and also uh, uh, associated with the uh, autophagy. 
during autophagy, a damaged organelle or small amount of cytosol uh, becomes surrounded by uh, a double bond uh, membrane and the lysosome uh, fuses with the uh, with the outer membrane of the physical of this physical and the lysosomes uh, dismantle the inner membrane and uh, the enclosed material and the resulting uh, small organic material uh, are released to the cytosol for reuse now we have another uh, endomembrane system organelle. We have vacuole, and remember that vacuoles are found in uh, plant cells. Uh, the central vacuoles, uh, uh, we found the central vacuoles uh, with the plant cells I talked about before, uh, with the difference between animals and plant cells. Um, we have different types of uh, vacuoles. Uh, vacuoles uh, are large vesicles uh, derived from the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus. Thus, vacuoles are an internal or integral part of cells' uh, endo, uh, endomembrane system. Vacuoles perform a variety of functions in different uh, kinds of cells. Uh, we have uh, different kinds of vacuole. Uh, we have food vacuoles. Uh, that's formed by phagocytosis and we have in contractile uh, vacuoles uh, and many unicellular proteases living in fresh water uh, have contractile vacuole uh, that pump excess water out of the cells and uh, many plant uh, cells generally contain a large vac a central vacuole uh, which develops by the coalescence of uh, smaller vacuoles, the solution inside the central vacuole, we call it the uh, cell sap, uh, and the plants, uh, uh, those are, uh, have special function. Central function, uh, central uh, vacuoles function in plant cells, uh, they are a repository of uh, organic and organic ions, uh, including potassium and uh, chloride. The central vacuole play a major role in the plant uh, growth uh, for cells, of course, uh, which enlarge as the vacuole absorb water, enabling the cell to become larger uh, with a minimal uh, investment in a new cytoplasm. The cytosol often occupies only a thin layer between uh, the central vacuole and plasma membrane. So the ratio of a plasma membrane surface to cytosolic volume is sufficient, even for a large plant cells. The third category is for our uh, functional uh, organelle. We have an energy uh, processing organelle, we have mitochondria and chloroplast. Uh, in eukaryotic cells, the mitochondria and the chloroplast uh, are the organelles that convert energy to forms uh, that cells can use for work. Mitochondria are the sites of cellular respiration, the, the metabolic process that uses oxygen to drive the generation of ATP by extracting energy from the sugars, fats, and other fuels. Chloroplasts found in plants and algae are the site of photosynthesis. This process in uh, chloroplasts converts solar energy to chemical energy by absorbing sunlight and using it to drive the synthesis of organic compounds such as sugars from carbon dioxide and water. And we have peroxisomes um, in animal cells. Those are oxidative organelles. And mitochondria and uh, 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 chloroplasts, if you would talk about the evolutionary origins, uh, those display similarities with bacteria uh, that lead to indecipient theory. This theory uh, states that an early ancestor of eukaryotic cells, host cells, engulfed an oxygen uh, using non-photosynthetic prokaryotic cell mitochondria. Evolutionary, the uh, engulfed cell formed a relationship with the host cell 
in which it was enclosed, uh, becoming an endosymbiont, a cell living within another cell. Indeed, over the course of evolution, the host cell and its endosymbiont merged into a single organism, uh, a eukaryotic cell uh, with the endosymbiont uh, having become a mitochondrion. And then uh, at least one of these cells may have then taken up a photosynthetic prokaryote, uh, becoming the ancestor of eukaryotic cells that contain chloroplast. We will start with mitochondria. Uh, mitochondria are found in nearly all eukaryotic cells. The number of mitochondria correlates with the cell's level of uh, metabolic activity. Uh, example says that move or contract have proportionally more mitochondria. Each of the two membranes enclosing uh, the mitochondria is a phospholipid bilayer. So mitochondria and mitochondria are covered with a double layer of uh, phospholipid bilayer. Uh, those enclosing the mitochondria uh, are composed of phospholipid bilayer with a unique correlation of endolipid proteins. Uh, the outer is smooth, uh, but the inner uh, membrane is convoluted with enfoldings uh, called uh, cristi. Those are the cristi, those folds with the inner membrane. The inner membrane divides the mitochondria into two internal compartments. The first is the intermembrane space between the outer and inner membrane. We have intermembrane space. Uh, this narrow region between the outer and inner membrane. The second compartment, uh, the mitochondrial matrix. We call the mitochondrial matrix is enclosed by the inner membrane. Uh, the matrix containing many different enzymes as well as the mitochondrial DNA and the ribosomes. Uh, enzymes in the matrix catalyze some of the steps of cellular respiration. Other proteins that function in respiration, including the enzyme that make up uh, or that make ATP are built into the inner membrane. A highly folded surfaces, the Christie give the inner mitochondrial uh, membrane, a large surface area. So remember that mitochondria perform cellular respiration. That means it will uh, generate ATP from glucose or another uh, uh, macromolecules or another fuels, fats, amino acids. They will produce ATP, uh, so they will convert uh, the uh, energy within the band, the covalent band between those uh, uh, macromolecules into ATP. Uh, and then uh, the cellular respiration uh, are drive by uh, specific enzymes found in the mitochondria. Are those are built in within the inner mitochondrial membrane, most of them. And some of those enzymes are found in the matrix. Uh, so this uh, Christie uh, that increase uh, Christie is the folds within the intermembrane uh, intermembrane uh, the intermembrane of mitochondria. Those increase the surface area for more uh, cellular respiration uh, chemical process occurs there. Uh, chloroplasts are found in uh, plant cells, and chloroplasts uh, contain um, the green pigment chlorophyll along with enzymes and uh, other molecules that functions in the photosynthesis, photosynthetic production of sugar. This uh, lens shaped, these lens shaped uh, organelles uh, are found in leaves and other green uh, organ of plants and in algae. The chloroplast is a specialized member uh, of family of closely related plant uh, organelles called plastids. 
uh, one type of plastid, the amyloplast, is a colorless organelle that stores starch in those particles, a root of um, roots and tubers. Another is the chromoplast, which has pigment uh, that give fruits and flowers their orange and yellow hues. Uh, the content of uh, a chloroplast are uh, partitioned from the cytosol by an envelope consisting of two membranes separated by a very narrow intermembrane space. Remember that always between two uh, double layer of uh, biological membrane, we have a space. We saw the space in nuclear envelope and in mitochondria inner and outer membrane, and here in the plastid uh, tube, uh, we have an intermembrane space between the outer and inner membrane. Inside the chloroplast is another membrane system in the form of flattened inner, um, those are flattened interconnected sac called thylakoid. Each one is called thylakoid. In some region, uh, Thylakoid are stacked like uh, poker chips. Each stack is called granum. We call this stack granum. The fluid outside the thylakoids is the stroma. We call this fluid around the thylakoid and uh, the granum. Those, uh, so the inside of chloroplast is filled with stroma, which contains the chloroplast uh, DNA and ribosomes, as well as many enzymes. So the membranes uh, of chloroplast uh, divide uh, the chloroplast space into three compartments. The intermembrane space, this is the first compartment between the inter and outer, inter and outer uh, membrane, we have a space and we have the stroma that enclosed uh, with the intermembrane. And we have the thylakoid space that's found inside each thylakoid. This compartmental organization enables the chloroplast to convert light energy to chemical energy during photosynthesis. Peroxisomes uh, contains enzymes that remove hydrogen atoms from um, various uh, substrates and transfer them to oxygen, uh, producing um, hydrogen peroxide. These reactions have many different functions. Some peroxisomes use oxygen to, pro uh, to break down fatty acids into smaller molecules. Uh, transported uh, to mitochondria and they will transport uh, those breakdowns or the materials uh, from the fatty acids into a mitochondria used for cell respiration. Peroxisomes in liver detoxify alcohol and other harmful compounds to oxygen. Hydrogen peroxide formed by a peroxisome is itself toxic, but the organelle also contains enzyme that convert hydrogen peroxide to water.